So uh, I start now. Unexpected noise of the curb track. It includes wheel squeal noise, corrugation noise, and fan drain noise. In this webinar, we will talk about more on the corrugation noise because this is the unexpected noise. When a train runs on a curb track, the rowing direction slightly deviate from the wheel direction, such that at the high wheel, there is a fan rubbing noise. And at the low wheel, there is lateral stick slip. This creates additional noise and noise due to stick slip and fan rubbing is uncertain. We don't know when it would happen and how strong. And also the occurrence is intermittent and unpredictable. For a well-maintained curve track, this additional noise can be limited within three to six dBH, depending on the wheel corrugation growth rate and how frequent we grind the wheel. If we grind the wheel very frequently, we can limit this additional noise. In EIA in Hong Kong, this extra noise is partly addressed by the check wearing correction. This correction is always 3 dB. So both strict or curved check, there is a check wear correction of plus 3 dBA. Let us watch this video to hear the French rubbing noise and corrugation noise. Corrugation noise. And there is a quiet period. Another corrugation noise. Another quiet period. And there is French noise. So can you hear the intermittent roaring noise? This is a S curve track. It travels at 55 kph. There is three turn, the first turn, second turn, and third turn. At each turn, there is French rubbing noise and corrugation noise. The corrugation noise is around 460 hertz. And the French rubbing noise is at higher frequency, it is like this sound, you, you can hear it. It is uh, above 800 hertz. Okay, let's uh, repay this video to see whether you can clearly differentiate the French rubbing noise and the corrugation noise. And this is five period. Second turn. There is French noise. those corrugation noise was not expected in the assessment because the corrugation, uh, the wheel system is assumed to have a very smooth surface in the EIA. Okay, then come to the content page of the webinar. First, we will talk about the curve track dynamics. Actually, we already covered it. It talked about the French contact noise and stick slip. We will further explain on this. Then we will talk about three types of curve track noise, French rubbing noise, wheel squeal noise, and corrugation noise. Then we will discuss our questions. Is the curve track noisier than the strict track? We will look at the saloon noise data, the noise data at the NSL to see whether the curve track have higher variation than the strict track. Then we look at the EIA method does it cover any correction for the curve track? So this fee item would be the major item for uh, today's webinar. If we have time, we will 
paid back video with special gram to let us hear the um, special content of different type of noise. Then we have a discussion on the retrofit measure for this unexpected noise of curve trap. Uh, we hope we can finish all this before 7 p.m. in Hong Kong, Hong Kong time. So, uh, okay, this come to the most difficult slide in the webinar, curve trap noise, three type of curve, curve trap noise. Uh, the first type is French rubbing noise. The second one is wheel squeal noise and corrugation noise is the third one. For the French rubbing noise, the noise level, the noise is by the uh, friction at the French contact. This is the uh, side surface of the wheel, it's a vertical surface. And the, for the second type and third type, the wheel squeal and corrugation noise, the excitation location is at the top surface of the wheel. There is repeated stick slip excitation on the top surface of the wheel. So compared to the French rubbing noise, it is intermittent like this sounds. It is pop band and high frequency. For the wheel squeal and corrugation noise, they are both generated due to the repeated stick slip excitation on the top surface of the wheel. The wheel squeal noise is intermittent high pitch. It is in general, it's higher than 1,500 hertz, is sometimes maybe 7,000 hertz or 8,000 hertz. It may contain multiple tone load pits uh, with narrow band over tones. Corrugation noise is only general when there is corrugation at the wheel surface. So it is the result of regular corrugation at the wheel surface. Sometimes we call this corrugation is short pitch corrugation. It is mid and low frequency below uh, 800 hertz. Tone load and roaring. Squeal noise is caused by the wheel wrestling mode. When the excitation, the stick slip excitation frequency match the wheel vibration mode, it will create a very loud squeal noise eek, like this. And then the um, corrugation noise is when the wheel just uh, grinded, it is have a very smooth surface. There's no corrugation noise, but because of the lateral stick slip, it will remove certain material. Every time when it have a slippage, there are some materials is removed from, from the wheel top surface. Then it have some corrugation. The corrugation takes a few months before being noticed. Okay, there is another slide talking about the lateral stick slip and the, and the wheel screw at the curve track. Uh, when this excitation frequency match the wrestling mode of the wheel vibrations, then it generates wheel squealed. Uh, on the other hand, if we look at the spectrum, uh, there is multiple noise pit. This low frequency noise pit, probably due to the corrugation. And this is the general noise. Then there is broad band high frequency noise. This is the French rubbing noise. And there is multiple pit, this due to the wheel squeal noise. Okay, another slide to explain the lateral stick slip and the corrugation formation. When a train run on curve track, the wheel is actually going forward and sliding sideways and going forward and sliding sideways like this. When it go forward, it stick to the wheel and starting sideways, it is slipping. Every time it slip, it take away certain material from the wheel. So the corrugation growth take a few months before being noticeable. Uh, this is the corrugations after five or six months. Uh, this corrugation is less than 0 .0 0 0.05 millimeter, less than 50 micron. It would be around 25 micron, something like this. It is, uh, but it's already very clear. When the train running on this, the noise level would be increased more than, uh, increased by 15 or 20 dB at this frequency. Uh, this is one of the example. There is a corrugation at 630 Hertz. Noise level increased by 15 dB. Uh, this corrugation is around 10 micron. That means 0 0.01 millimeter. 
RMS corrugation. So this is very small corrugation, but already increased 15 dB. Uh, th this slide is also showing that after using the damper, it reduces the corrugation. It directly reduces the corrugation noise and also suppress the corrugation. So the corrugation grows very slowly. We will discuss this uh, in the coming webinar. Okay, then we come to the most important question of tonight. Is the curve track noisier than the shake track? First, we look at the um, we look at the saloon noise data. This is the noise level difference between the curve track and shake track. Zero dB means curve track and shake track at same noise level. Six dB means curve track noisier than shake track by six dB. The x axis is the radius of curvature of the curve track. So this is 500 meter curvature. This is 250. Uh, in Hong Kong, the main line is all, uh, the radius of curvature is more than 250. So we do not have data less than 250 meter radius of curvature. Okay, then there is a different color. All the blue color represent the data without squeal noise. The red color represents the data with slight squeal noise. So this is saloon noise. We measure the uh, put a microphone in the trains, allow it going all around the entire entire line, entire, and then when it we compare the noise level at curves and the strict track. So this train is already installed with the damping wing to reduce squeal noise. So the squeal noise is not significant. Okay, when we look at this data, even at very tight curve, 300 meter or 250 meter, the curve track noise and strict track, they have similar noise level, zero dB. That means similar noise level, but sometimes it is noisier. Even a low squeal noise, curve track can be noisier than the strict track by 4 dB, 5 dB, higher radius, uh, curve radius is still have 3 dB, 2 dB, or 3 dB. At, seven meter, at 700 meter radius curvature, the uh, curved noise is still higher than the strict track until 900 meter radius of curvature. Uh, for the wet color, this is the slightly squeal noise. Sometimes it can be 15 dB higher than the strict track. What does a triangle mean? Triangle means the averaging time. Because squeal noise is intermittent and short duration. So it, 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 like this. If the short duration averaging, it would be higher noise level. So this is one second averaging. This is five second averaging. This is 15 second averaging. So we can see there is, at some time, it still have more than 10 dB noisier than the strict track. If there is no squeal noise, the noise level sometimes is similar to the strict track, sometimes a few dB noisier than the strict track. So the question is, should we have any corrections for the curve track? If we want some correction, what number should be the corrections? For example, 5 dB, this number, or a higher for conservative, we need to think about this. Okay, then we look at the data from the noise sensitive receiver. In this data, we will look at the uh, variation. So uh, all this data, we look at the standard durations to see how much the uh, variation of the data. In this strict track, it has standard duration of 1.2 dB. That means it, they are very consistent. Normally, the, the overall coverage would be around four times of the standard duration. So the it would be around 4.8 dB covering 95% of the data. Okay, this is another strict track. The standard duration is around 2 dB, 1.5 dB, 2.6 dB. So it has higher variation in this strict track. There is another strict track. The standard duration is 1.3 dB. So it is quite consistent. The variation is not a lot. Uh, this is strict track. However, there is some data is we are not quite understand 
some data, this data is very low level. And I think there is other factor affecting this data. So this, uh, this data of 4.19 may not be a reliable data. Anyway, this trap uh, have around two or three dB standard duration. So uh, I think this due to this unreasonable data, we may ignore this data. So another one, this is a curve trap around 550 meter radius of curvature. The standard duration is sometimes is 1.1. So it is curve track and switch track at same noise level. Sometimes it is 2.5 dB standard duration. So the variation is quite high. This is another curve track because it is a tight curve. It is 250 meter to 270 meter. The variation has higher variation. It, the standard duration from 2.9 to 4.7. So from this data, we there is indication that curve chat have higher variation, the noise level variation. So we compare all the data. A uh, strict chat has um, less standard duration. Uh, this data may be may may not be trustful. So and then if the way that's occurring around 500 meter, this uh, is the standard durations. If it is very tight curve, the standard duration is higher. So uh, from this data, we cannot make a clear conclusion, but there is slight indication that the curve track have higher variation than the strict track. Okay, then we look at the EIA prediction method. Uh, there is a lot of um, there is a lot of correction factor. We are not going to go through the calculation method. Uh, we just look at the correction factor. There is distant corrections, chain frequency correction, ground effect correction, barrier correction, refraction correction, speed correction, angle of wheel correction, facade correction, chat wear correction, John correction, slab check correction. But there is no correction for the curve, curve check. So should we have a curve check correction there in order to make a better predictions? But anyway, the, this track correction may be relating to the check wear correction, which is 3 dB8. So uh, if the 3 dB8 check wear correction is already covered the curve check correction, then it would be conservative enough. If the track correction is larger than 3 dB8, then the, there may be a lead to have another correction for the curve track. Okay, we go to the last slide of the first three items. Uh, it just reveal this three type of noise. French rubbing noise, in general, the noise increases at no more than 3 dB. It is just high frequency spot band noise. So the, the track wear correction of 3 dB is already enough to cover the French rubbing noise. For the wheel squeal noise, actually in Hong Kong, we did a very, very good job. The wheel squeal noise is, is uh, almost eliminated in the Ming Nai. It's insignificant, eliminated in the Ming Nai. Then, so we may not need to consider in the EIA because this would be the uh, track engineer to make sure there would not be squeal noise at the main line. However, the corrugation noise is something that is cannot be avoided because the, the corrugation will be developed when the train running for a few months. So they, they need to grind the wheel to make the wheel smooth again every few months at the curve track. Once the corrugation developed, the noise level would be increased by 10 or 20 dB. So what I call unexpected noise of the curve track is this corrugation noise. It do not expect it in the EIA. Okay, this should be a noise. So this noise is led you to hear the squeal noise, but uh, this is very difficult to find in Hong Kong. There is a lot many squeal noise. This is uh, only at the close to the depot. So this is the squeal noise here. High frequency, 4,000 hertz. Okay. 
Okay, this is the um, French rubbing noise. This is a few hundred meters from the, from the train. We can hear the French rubbing noise. And here, this, this is just the real French touching the wheels. Another noise. Uh, this is uh, at the Taiwan Poyun Railway uh, MRT. This thing is traveling from the airport. Five percent. Money very, very slow in order to go to noise. We can see that the noise is also around 460 hertz. Uh, this is another direction, running from the private city to the airport. Very slow, the train is traveling at very, very slow. So when we compare the spectrum, we find there is always a 460 hertz in the Taiwan rail, in also in the MOX rail, MOL. So the tonal noise frequency on the rail on resilient base pay may be independent to the train speed, train types, or weights of curvature of the track. So, but this is non non conclusive. This is just some observations. So then we come to the last slide. Actually, is the time for our discussion. Uh, how should we mitigate this unexpected noise? Uh, could be by reducing the train speed, using the wheel damper to suppress the corrugation and suppress the wheel vibrations. More frequent wheel grinding. There is a different way to do that. Okay, uh, thank you very much. I will hand the time for Mass to uh, manage the Q&A section. Is there any noise, uh, any questions? Uh, from the last slide, we can see that the once you install the damper, the wheel corrugation is suppressed. Our damper is the only damper in the well can suppress the corrugation by 90%. It reduces the corrugation growth by 90%. Okay, so thank you, Wilson. Um, so our next webinar will be, will be topic is um, best rail damper in the world, nano vibration control, uh, which is uh, going to held on, held, held on April, uh, 12th of April. Another one will be um, rail corrugation suppression by rail damper will be held on 10th of May or in uh, Wednesday. So you will receive the invitation email um, around two weeks before the webinar. <clears throat> so the next two seminar is actually talking about how to mitigate this unexpected noise from the curve track. So I hope there will be some discussions. <laughs> Sorry, I. So I think this is the end of Wilson's presentation. Um, thank you very much. And um, we are going into the Q&A session. Um, please feel free to ask any question through your uh, microphone. Please note that the, your microphone is uh, muted by default. So maybe we go to the last slide. Let's look at the, we could talk about which mitigation would be the best one. Uh, uh, this photograph actually is taken at 2010. This is the first installation of the wheel damper in Hong Kong. This I went to the Japan for the IWRN uh, presentation. And there is a few people ask me whether our damper able to suppress corrugation. At that time, I say, I don't know. But once I come back from Japan, MTR engineer called me and told me that the wheel damper suppressed the corrugation. Then we make a monitoring on how much the damper suppressed the corrugation. So we could talk about this in the coming webinars. Okay. Oh, so there's a question. Uh, um, is what, the what extent is of squeal noise direct, directly proportional to the train speed? Any data to confirm this? Train speed and squeal noise is, um, many people say that squeal noise is not affected by the train speed. The 
intensity of the squeal noise would be affected by train speed, but the frequency and the occurrence may not affect it by the train speed. So is it clear? The squeal noise frequency, if it is 4,000 hertz, eat like this, whether it travel at uh, 40 kph or 60 kph or 80 kph, they remain at 4,000 hertz. And it is also intermittent because the wheel is sometimes touching on the low wheel, touching on the wheel, they are bouncing forward and backward. They're hunting uh, because the wheel uh, in the curve track, uh, the gauge is wider than the straight track. In the straight track, the gauge is uh, 1435. Um, correct me if I'm, I'm wrong. But in the curve track, the two wheel may be further away by 10, sometimes maybe 15 millimeters. So then uh, the bogey sometimes would be touching the high wheel, sometimes touching the low wheel at the front gauge corner. So it is hunting be between the low wheel and high wheel. So the uh, squeal noise would be intermittent. Uh, in terms of the intensity or squeal noise, uh, it would be proportional to the speed. So at high speed, the intensity, it would be much louder. Okay, any other questions? Yes, the other question is, um, can we reduce sliding of the wheel over railway to prevent corrugation growth, like change wheel or a rail or wheel design? I think uh, I'm not sure whether there is some MTR people there. Uh, they have very good to to control this in Hong Kong, this is, they use uh, LCF. LCF is something, a uh, lubrication stick to make the wheels uh, have certain lubrications. Also, there is friction modifier. I'm not sure whether MTR uh, has using the friction modifier. Friction modifier could uh, reduce the sliding of the wheel because the wheel has to be taken a very high loading. Uh, the left and right wheel are rigidly connect together. That means they had to turn on the same speed. It's different from the uh, from the private car. The car, the left wheel and right wheel can turn different speed, but in the train, they are fixed together. Left wheel and right wheel had to be turned at the same speed. So they would have, um, they had to go straight in the curve track. When it has to go straight, but it's in curve track. So it must be, going straight forward and then sideways and going straight forward and then sideways. This uh, cannot be avoided. Okay, and other questions? Um, I think there's a comment um, saying that, I think the presenter exercise may be repeatedly used to explore what better materials to be changed for lower operating noise. For example, trial use of rubber wheels with larger wheel numbers. This is a comment somewhat. Okay. And the other comment is um, it appears from the rail uh, the tram, no, tram noise and LRT, LRT noise, that squeal noise is speed dependent. So it might worth further study for heavy rail. Okay, thank you. Thank you. So, so another question is, does guard rail help to restrain the wheel vibrations and so does the squeal noise? Okay, my make my best guess. I think the guard rail do not help to reduce squeal noise. The guard rail is just make sure the, uh, the wheel would not derail. It is a safety device rather than reducing the squeal noise. So it that way it would not reduce the squeal noise. But uh, anybody, please let me know the correct answer. That That is my best guess. The problem of rubber wheel is the loading of the rubber wheel is not large enough. If we want to have, uh, at the moment, the actual loading of a train is 17 tons around this rigor, 15 or 17 tons. In order to have a rubber wheel, have 17 tons, rubber tire would be very, very large, maybe one meter, uh, maybe 1.5 meter diameter and very big. So um, if we pick, make a very large rubber wheel, there was uh, some study showing that when we make a uh, very large rubber wheel, finally, rubber tire noise would be similar or even noisier than the steel wheel noise. So rubber wheel is, in my opinion, rubber wheel would not reduce noise. Although it looked like we did reduce noise because every time we use rubber wheel, the, the train loading is much smaller for the light wheel or 
for a lightweight train. A heavy train cannot use rubber wheel. Rubber wheel would, would make it noisier. And that, that is my uh, understanding. Maybe correct me if I'm wrong. Um, there's another question. Any trial of using rail dampers was carried out for suppressing squeal noise at curved tracks? No, uh, we, we did not do any trial for uh, using wheel damper to suppress squeal noise. Uh, we did not develop any theory or model to use wheel damper to suppress squeal noise. Although there is some measurement data that wheel damper slightly reduce squeal noise, but there is no theory or no model to explain this phenomenon. Uh, many people reduce when they put a damper, the lumbar occurrence of the squeal and the intensity of the squeal reduce that, but uh, they do not have very good data. They just uh, saying observe that. Lubricant reduce squeal noise to certain extent. A lubricant is if the apply the right amount of lubricant, it is totally eliminate the squeal noise. Lubricant is very effective to reduce squeal noise. But, but anyway, squeal noise is already controlled very well in Hong Kong. Even wing water work for train noise. Yeah, yes, uh, wing water is a good lubricant. I know that uh, MTR has tried to use water spray to reduce the uh, squeal noise. Yes, it is effective, but there may be other concerns they did not use it anymore. Okay, I thank you for your uh, attend joining this webinar. I hope we can see you again in the next webinar in the 12th of April. Uh, we, we will talk about how to do the nylon vibration control. What I mean nylon vibration control is, is we control the vibrations less than the nanometer, less than the nanometer is we control the vibration level to the atomic level. Okay, I hope to see you in next seminar. Thank you very much.